Hi BBTs! Thank you so much for clicking on this week's video. If this is the first time you're watching one of my YouTube videos, welcome to my channel. My name is Ubi Ogulu. In today's video, we are going to be talking about my breast augmentation operation situation. <laughs> if you want to find out more about that, then definitely keep watching the video. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Today, I'm only going to be sharing the stuff that I'm comfortable with sharing with you guys and the stuff that I know. I just want to put out a disclaimer. I'm obviously not a surgeon. I'm obviously not a surgeon's assistant. I it's, This is not something that I do for a living, okay? All I know is based on what I've researched and based on my um, conversation with the surgeon, as in my consultations. I'm going to start off with sharing a little bit about the reason why I had it done. Um, so if you've watched my get to know me tag video then you would know that I pretty much grew up being extremely athletic like from a really young age I was doing track and field and playing sports and stuff like all the way through to university and um, so I have a very oh had <laughs> I had a very boyish body flat chested no curves <laughs> <laughs> zero curves I'm shaped like an ironing board and I just wanted to feel more feminine and for me this was a way to feel more feminine the new boobs create the illusion of a curve so yeah that, that was basically the reason I wanted to do it if you are wanting to do it you need to be sure that it's what you want to do because it is a life long commitment like you will have to change your implants every 10 to 12 years depending on how they're doing um so yeah it's a lifelong thing so be sure before you take the dive i think the most important thing that you can do for yourself as someone who wants to have any sort of plastic surgery done is research it is so 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 vital like it's extremely vital you want to research where you're going you want to research the surgeon you want to research the procedure and the potential risks that the procedure comes with and all of that stuff you want to make sure you are armed with as, as much knowledge as possible before you go ahead and have it done i had my procedure done in turkey in istanbul i'm not going to specify the group or clinic or whatever that I went with or the surgeon that I went with just because I don't want people to feel like you know because I've been there they should go there or whatever and I don't want it to be a situation where if someone happens to go to the same place that I went and they they're not happy with something then it's like oh Ubi said you know I, I don't want that at all um so I'm not gonna put that information out there and I hope you guys are okay with that so what I had done was obviously a breast augmentation. I told the surgeon that I wanted to be a C cup. I was borderline A cup, like I would fill out an A cup when I'm on my period, but when I'm not on my period, it was like barely there. I always had to wear like padded AF, padded AF bras, like sports bras, because those are nice because like they're padded properly or push up bra. Um and <sighs> Guys, the struggle was real. And I don't enjoy wearing bras. Like, I really don't enjoy wearing bras. I'm not wearing one right now. And I don't have to wear one because I paid for them. <laughs> but yeah, um, I used to wear, like, really padded bras. And I wanted to be done with that life. So I told the surgeon that I wanted to be a C-cup. He suggested 350cc high-profile round implants. He um, put the bra... On me and put the implants inside so I could get a feel of what it would look like post up and I was really happy with it he also showed me 450 I think that was more like D cup double D cup and I was just like no I'm not trying to be that although to be fair I think I might be a D cup I don't know I haven't measured yet I'm only three months post up now and um, I'm only probably gonna measure like six months post up there are various type of incisions that you can go with there is the one that is under your boob there's the one that's around your areola and you can go under your underarm and some people also go via the belly button very strange but anyways i opted for the peri areola incision which is the one that is under your areola and the reason i wanted to go with that one is because my boobs are pretty pretty perky now and i didn't want you know that scar on the bottom to show especially if you wore something that had like under boob and also because I'm dark skinned, I figured that when the 
scar underneath for the heels it'll blend in pretty well with my areola and from the research that i did that seems to be the the incision that most surgeons actually prefer and recommend um the other ones they recommend based on whether you have you are prone to get like keloid scarring and stuff like that which i'm not thank god um but yeah that was the incision that i went with the implants were placed underneath the muscles so you can either place it above the muscles underneath the muscles or in between and i wanted it underneath the muscles because i wanted it to look as natural as possible at the end of the day like i didn't want someone to meet me for the first time and be like oh my gosh it actually definitely had a boobs done so i want you to like see me for the first time and not think about that at all there are some people who want it to look fake i'm just not one of those people um so yeah that's that was the reason i went with under the muscle and another thing with under the muscle is like it just sits better it doesn't sag as quickly like with them over the muscle because there isn't breast tissue to like keep it in place it tends to sag a lot quicker and i didn't want any of that like i wanted perky and i got perky so i'm really happy about that if you have done any research into medical tourism especially for plastic surgeries you will see that a lot of the places that offer it offer a package deal so the place i went with it basically came with um seven nights in a five-star hotel one night in the hospital all the medication that you're going to need and like the anesthesia and all of that stuff is covered including in like in the bill and um, it also includes your transfers to and from the airport and then internal transfers between the hotel and your appointments and the hospital so i felt like that was a really really good package deal and the guys that i went with allowed me to pay it off before the procedure most other places you literally pay a deposit and then you come with the balance before just before you actually do the procedure or you know you like you you pay it off before, um on the day of the procedure um so i was really happy that the place i went with allowed me to pay it off um before the procedure and there was no interest on the cost as well so i had a year to pay it off after paying the deposit and there was no interest charged on it so I was quite happy with that so the whole package cost around 2200 pounds i also had to pay 50 dollars for a turkish visa because i didn't have my south african passport at the time so with the south african passport the visa is free and the visa is valid for six months but you're only allowed to be in turkey for i think three months something like that um, and then I paid for the flights as well. I paid for direct flights from Dublin to Istanbul, which is about 320 euro with Turkish Airlines. And because of the Rona, my procedure actually got moved down a couple of months and Turkish Airlines was really, really, really good. And um, they moved the flights for free and it changed a good number of times guys like i was stressed i was like what if they cancel the flights again because i think at that point in time when i went they were trying to get as many people onto one flight as possible and the flights weren't even full even then so um i was really really happy with that um so in total i think i, pa I paid about maybe 2800 2700 euro but because I paid it off over time, I didn't really feel like I was paying that much money for it. But that was what I paid. So if you're going to have any sort of operation, you need to make sure you don't smoke for two weeks before the op. That bit didn't affect me because I don't smoke. And then you're not allowed to drink one week before the op. Um, so that was fine as well. Didn't drink before the op. And you need to make sure there's no alcohol in your, in your blood when they operate on you because you will bleed out because alcohol thins your blood so yeah you just need to make sure you do whatever you need to do to comply with the health requirements before you have the procedure done i had to arrive two days before my operation as opposed to one day before my operation so if everything had been fine in the world i would only have had to arrive one day before my op and get my bloods done but i had to arrive two days before so that i could get my bloods done and covid done i also had a covid test done a week before i flew for the operation and I sent the results to the clinic so that they knew that I was COVID negative and um, it was just a precautionary measure there was no regulation around having to get it done but for my own sanity and for my own 
sake, I had it done and I'm glad that I did. It just meant that I had two COVID tests done in the space of a week and it was not fun at all. If you've had the test done, you know that that thing is not fun. It's not fun at all. So I got to Istanbul the first day. They picked me up from the airport, took me to the hotel. The hotel was really, really nice. It's a five-star hotel. Um, I had dinner and then I chilled. Then the next morning I had my blood and my COVID test done. Um, after that I went back to the hotel and had um, I had a massage done. So the hotel is really nice. They have an indoor pool, an outdoor pool, a gym, and then they've got like the masseuse area. So I had a massage done and it just really relaxed me for, you know, before the operation. Cause I was really, really nervous. Like I was extremely nervous before I had the procedure done. Um, I also went for a consultation with the surgeon the day before the procedure, just to make sure everything that I wanted was what I got and to like ask any more questions. And the first question I asked was about whether the incision that I was going to go with was going to affect being able to breastfeed should I decide to have kids one day in the future and he said no it doesn't it doesn't affect it at all because when they cut the incision they don't touch your mammary glands so yeah that was like my first question and then the second question that I asked was um about nipple sensitivity he also said it does not generally affect your nipple sensitivity. In some cases it will, but if it does, your nipple sensitivity will come back. Um, in my case, post-op, my one nipple was hypersensitive and the other one was normal. So yeah, I really didn't affect it that much. And then the one that was hypersensitive, it calmed down like within a week. So yeah, that was, that was really chill. Um, and then I asked a whole bunch of other questions about other stuff I don't really remember but at the end of it I was quite like happy and like very much ready to like just have the procedure over and done with like literally every time people ask me how I was I was just like I just want to be done I just want to wake up post up and then start the healing process and you know yeah get that going I actually filmed a vlog while I was in Turkey so I'm going to upload that video next week. It's going to have a little bit of like detail about some of the stuff that happened while I was there, especially the stuff that I packed the night before the operation. So the things that I bought were a V-shaped pillow which is an orthopedic pillow that helps you sleep more upright and sleep on your back. I also bought um, heating pads because I thought I was going to be in pain for my back, didn't need them. I bought snacks to take with me because I was going to be holed up in the hotel the whole time, didn't eat them. Um, what else did I take? Like I took a whole bunch of stuff, I just don't really remember everything that I took. Oh, I also took these um, cooling ice packs to put on because the swelling post-op is insane. So I bought it for the swelling. Um, and that I definitely used and it helped a lot but yeah the rest of the stuff that I used I don't really remember it's all gonna be in the the vlog for um, when I was in Turkey which I'll upload next week um, and yeah the day of the procedure I checked out of the hotel I left my suitcase at the hotel and I only took a bag with me because I was only gonna be in the hospital for one night and um, went to the hospital checked into the hospital and then I waited for my surgery and I was really, really anxious. The surgeon came in a few times and spoke to me. The nurses that were there were super nice. Only thing with the nurses is that a lot of them didn't speak English. So Google Translate became my best friend. The surgeon himself spoke English, which was really, really helpful. And you also get a coordinator that coordinates your, your travel for you. And then when you arrive in Turkey, you get another coordinator that coordinates your um or your appointments and will also be a translator if needs be so that was really helpful um yeah so the day of the operation i got into the gown i first put it on the wrong way because <laughs> i was like i'm not sure if i'm putting it on the right way or the wrong way and then i switched it around um the surgeon came in he did the marks on my body i don't think i got an, an image of that because i was just like really anxious i was really really anxious i just wanted to be done and they came, the nurses came in and they put a catheter in my arm for the anesthesia. And then, yeah, that was, that was it. I spent a lot of time 
before the up waiting for the up to happen i low-key took a nap as well <laughs> while i was waiting because i was so anxious uh, i spoke to a few friends as well prayed and stuff like that and yeah then then they they came to get me to take me into the to the operating theater and they came in with another bed and i had to get on that other bed and so i got on the other bed they made sure i wasn't wearing anything underneath the operating gown and then as soon as they took me out of the room they injected me with something into the catheter and i swear i didn't see that operating room like i was out before i even got to the operating theater so um yeah then when i woke up i was like in such a daze <laughs> <laughs> but I was very very happy to be awake I even took a picture and like sent it to my friends and stuff just to let them know that I'm still alive <laughs> um yeah so that was that was post up it was extremely painful let me tell you right after that operation the pain is insane literally as soon as I woke up from my surgery my chest felt so heavy like and i had the the tubes in my nose as well for oxygen and i had that for like maybe an hour or two before they took it out but my chest felt so heavy like even talking was tasking like oh my gosh i have a video where i was talking and may or may not put it in because i look so cringe <laughs> but i have a video i was talking um just after my operation and I watched it and I was just like wow I was in the trenches child I was in the trenches it's painful and like even when the surgeon came to check in on me and he was like how are you doing and I was like I'm in pain and he was like yeah it's a very painful procedure <laughs> like they literally tear through your muscles to put the implants in so naturally it is a painful procedure the other thing is after the operation when you come out they already put you in your compression bra so you need a compression bra to help with the swelling it basically keeps the implants in place so they're not moving around while it's your body's still trying to secure it in and then it also helps with like reducing the swelling so when i went for my post-op checkup with the surgeon he told me that you can wear any sports bra after that provided it doesn't have underwire you don't want to do any of that because you will mess it up um so what i did when i got home was i ordered sports bras online and then they, they got shipped to me i ordered from amazon they were really cheap it was like eight pounds for each bra or less than eight pounds for each bra and i almost paid 36 euro for one bra from mns can you imagine the madness anyway so i got my sports bras from amazon and they're really really nice and they just snatch you and they're comfortable and very very important you don't want to get one that you have to like raise your arms up to get into you need one that has like buttons or a zipper in the front because you can't be, be putting your arms up to get into clothes or anything post-op. Like it took me probably three weeks maybe before I actually started putting anything over my head. It might have even been a month before I actually started doing that because I was just like, nah. The discomfort is a lot and like no it's just wasn't worth it for me i know with other people who have healed differently they were able to do that a lot sooner but i was just like nah anything i wore was like zipped up in the front and or like you know um like a robe or whatever because i was at home the whole time and i was really fortunate to have such an amazing friend like michelle in my life because and when I got back to Dublin, literally an hour after I arrived, she was at my place to take care of me. And she spent like five days with me. She was cooking for me. She was making me my hot water bottle, getting me water. Like she did everything for me. And like, yeah, she's such an amazing person. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, yeah, the only thing she didn't do was bait me, <laughs> obviously, because I could do that myself. Um, but yeah, Michelle did everything for me. And she was like constantly checking in the whole time while I was away. Even post-op, 
every day michelle's how are you today how are you today how are you today <laughs> so yeah she's amazing thank you so much michelle um yeah so like she really really helped me so by the time she was gone i was about two weeks post op and then from there i was able to like cook for myself clean um, the kitchen, clean my apartment, do my laundry and all that stuff. That like, did take a toll, but I was able to do all that stuff, which was like grand. And that's what I really appreciated about going to Turkey is that because you're in the hospital, there's someone monitoring you. Literally every two hours, someone would come in and give me morphine and they were giving me antibiotics as well. So um, yeah, it was just better that I got to stay in the hospital because a breast augmentation is an outpatient surgery like you have your operation and then they send you home so with going to turkey to have it done you have your operation you spend the night in the hotel they keep an eye on you i mean in the hospital they keep an eye on you and their nurses constantly coming to check in on you and they were really really nice nurses so that was really good and then yeah the next afternoon early evening i left the, the hospital went to the hotel and oh guys day two i was like in so much pain and discomfort i was like why did i do this to myself i could have taken that money and like gone on holiday somewhere oh my god like a week like oh. i was going through it i was going through it um but i think uh in, in, i think it was like day two or day three that i was able to like just you know get my head in the right state of mind i hopped into the shower and then i started using my arms because your arms it becomes like they're not your own anymore especially my left arm i felt like i was rehabilitating my left arm post up because there was so much i couldn't do with my left arm and in that first week i realized that the more i use my right arm, my right arm the better the boob healed so i started being intentional about using my left arm as well to make sure that the left was healing well as well obviously don't pick up anything heavy don't be you know trying to do aerobics and stretching and all of that stuff because you will you know do more harm than good but just like getting back into the normal routine of using your arms helped a lot with regards to the healing another thing to note is that the right side of my body healed a lot faster than the left side because the right side is my dominant side so i saw the same with a lot of other girls who were in who are in the facebook group that i'm in and like they were commenting because they were also noticing like the 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 right side dropping faster than the left side but it's just because the your right arm is used a lot more than your left arm so the dominant side of your body is the side that's going to heal faster because it's the side that you use more frequently and those muscles are also stronger because again you use them more frequently um yeah like it was i noticed that like from the first week which is why i said i became intentional about using my left arm just to make sure that my my left side also drops and heals well as well and with working out if you're lifting weights like i have dumbbells and i've been using the dumbbells now because it's safe to use them and it's also helped a lot with my muscles like feeling a lot more comfortable and stuff like that so you know i was really fortunate in that i didn't have any drains post up so that was the one thing i think i was like looking forward to the least about the procedures the drains because if there is a lot of like fluid in your body area where they operated on or whatever then they have to put in drains to like collect the fluid until it completely drains out and i wasn't looking forward to that and thankfully i didn't have any drains i was so excited about that i can't lie i'm super excited about that and when i left the hospital the the surgeon had given me painkillers and he had given me antibiotics so obviously i had to take the antibiotics for seven days and the painkillers lasted for five days i also had ibuprofen with me because i was like i don't know what's going to happen you know so i took ibuprofen with me and i asked the surgeon if i could take them and he said i could just make sure if you're going to take anything extra you ask your surgeon the one thing he said to me was no aspirin because aspirin also thins your blood and the last thing you want is for your blood 
to be doing weird things when you were trying to heal. So I didn't take any aspirin. I generally don't take aspirin, to be fair. Um, so I didn't take any aspirin and I did take my ibuprofen in the middle of the day. And that helped me with dealing with the pain. Low key, I wish I had gone with somebody else because I did go alone. Um, but you, I was fine by myself you'll be fine by yourself you can go by yourself and um, the only thing was like when i was coming back here i had to have help with my luggage in hindsight i could have done it myself but i just didn't want to risk anything um and i ended up packing a lot of clothes that i didn't even wear because i thought i would be fine for off. i really thought i'd be able to be out and about because i'm part of like two facebook groups um and a lot of the girls had said that they were fine posts up, they were able to be out and about. So I didn't get to see that much of Istanbul, which was really sucky because I would have liked to see it. It is a beautiful city and the people there are so beautiful, oh my gosh. Um, but I didn't get to see it and that really sucked. So I ended up having all these clothes that I didn't wear and so that made my luggage heavier. So if you are going then that's something you need to be mindful of like don't overpack because then you just have too much stuff that you don't need okay so three days post op i went in for a checkup with the surgeon so be while i was in the hospital i still had a dressing on and then before i got discharged from the hospital he changed the dressing to tapes um, and then when i went for the follow-up checkup he changed the tapes and he gave me extra tape just in case. So the nice thing about the tape is that it completely covers your incision and you're able to shower comfortably with the tapes on and the, the water is not going to get through the tapes. Provided you're not soaking, which you shouldn't even be doing um, while you're still healing. Um, so yeah, that, that was really, really helpful. Um, went in for the checkup. He told me how to massage. So you literally push inwards, upwards, downwards, and outwards. And that's essentially the massage. I've been doing that this whole time. No, I, I only started doing the massages one month post-op. So one month post-op, I took the tapes off. By then, the whatever they used to suture had completely dissolved and it was just the scar. So one month post-op, I took post off I took the tapes off and then I started massaging then I started putting bio oil on the um on the incision as he had recommended so everything that I've been doing has been per my surgeon's instructions you need to listen to whatever your surgeon tells you and just do that because that's the person that operated on you and that's the person that will know best what your body needs to recover so listen to your surgeons so yeah so massaging a month post-op and putting my oil on a month post-op and you're not allowed to work out for six weeks post-op i think i only started working out like nine weeks post-op you have to sleep on your back for the whole of the first month i slept on my back for six weeks because i wanted to be safe and i realized why they say six weeks because at six weeks when I was going down the stairs in my apartment, that was the first time I didn't feel like the the implant was moving inside me. <laughs> it felt like the implant was like getting secured in my body. So I finally understood why they say it's six weeks before you even start working out because the last thing you want to do is he um, mess up your healing process. And the other thing I realized was like weights. If you're someone who, who works out and you do like weights for your upper body, you most likely recover a lot sooner um, and I found that a lot of the girls who are like fitness buddies have had their boobs done and they recover very very quickly because their muscles are very strong and like you know trained and stuff so when I started working out again I, I realized that it was also helping with the healing and like the muscles relaxing and stuff like that so the surgeon said that after three months, that's when you'll see, you start seeing your final shape and size of boobs. And I'm three months now and they're looking sandy. <laughs> if I do say so myself. <laughs> so yeah, really, really happy with it. Really happy with the decision that I made. And yeah, I know a lot of people will say, don't go to Turkey, don't go to Turkey. But the amount of people that have gone to Turkey, the amount of people that are still going to Turkey and like um, Lithuania. And there's also a, sur a surgeon in Brussels that people go to. 
people are doing medical tourism getting the procedure done here in Ireland is about 6,000 euro I paid about 2,800 euro and that includes my flight and this is me staying in a five-star hotel for a week I also spent under 100 euro for room service for a week so my accommodation at the hotel included breakfast so I was getting lunch and dinner and all of that cost less than 100 euro and including getting a massage at the hotel so if you include the, the massage it comes up to about 90 euro for a space of like seven days or six days of room service which i think is not bad at all considering that 90 euro will probably get you a three course meal here in dublin so yeah like the main reason a lot of people are doing medical tourism is because of the cost benefits and that's why my thing is like research is very important all you need to do is google the name of the surgeon and real self and you will see what the surgeon's reviews are on real self realself.com is very helpful if you're looking for a wish picture like an image of what you want your boobs to look like that you can show the surgeon um, and it'll help the surgeon with like you know advising you what they think would be best to get that look the other thing that you need to be conscious of is the fact that just because I did 350cc to get a C cup, 350cc high profile to get a C cup doesn't mean that it's going to work out the same for you. It all depends on your body's frame. So like 350cc high profile and 350cc low profile are not the same thing. So the profile depend determines how much it projects out so if i'm if you're going to do a high profile it means that it's going to project out more but then this also means that the base width is shorter so if you do um moderate profile the base width increases but the projection reduces so like the base width this width so if you did um if i were to do like low profile it would be like this wide but it wouldn't project out much at all and it's like that's obviously too big for the frame of my body so the high profile is perfect and it fits in very well and it projects out just enough so that it's not like Pamela Anderson-esque so I'm trying to look like that <laughs> um, but yeah like there's just a lot of things that you'll find out when you're doing research about the procedure for yourself if there are any questions that you guys want to ask you can leave them in the comments down below but that's basically it for me. My boobs are really healing really well and they look really, really nice on my body and I'm really, really happy with them. So yeah, I can't fault the place that I went to at all. Like everything, everything was dandy. Like yeah, there were a few hiccups. Like when I got to the airport, I had to get a fit to fly, which um, I had to pay for because when I got to the airport, it was like extremely early. The surgeon wasn't up. Otherwise, if it was like during normal operating hours, they would have sent me one and I wouldn't have had to pay for it. Um, yeah, it was just, you know, minor things. Nothing that you're like, oh my gosh, my life is in danger. Nothing like that at all. So I'm really happy. But yeah, guys, that is it. I know this video is a little bit long, but there's a lot of information and I didn't want to like be leaving stuff out unnecessarily. So yeah, if you are considering getting it done, I would say do it, girl. It's your body, you're the one that's going to live with it. You know, you're the one that's going to live with whatever it throws your way. So you might as well do it as long as you're doing it for the right reasons as long as you're doing it for yourself and not to please anybody else because it is a painful procedure to go through and it is a lot of money to spend for somebody else okay so make sure you're doing it for yourself and that's what i wanted to say on that as i said if you have any questions definitely leave them in the comment section or you can dm me on instagram if you don't want to put it on a pub public platform and yeah that's it for this video I can't believe I finally did this video. <laughs> Anyways, guys, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.